evening, everyone. Welcome back to RPGs We Love 3. Uh, I am Scala Kitty back again, and this time I have with me the absolutely wonderful Vani Vaughn. Aww. Who's, who's going to be here running Willow, uh, which you, we now can officially say will be at RPG Limit Break. We're very, very excited for you. Hooray. Yes, I am. I am thrilled about it as well. It's, uh, it's you know, I got to do Limit Break last year. It was an incredible honor, and I'm more beyond excited to be able to do it again. Uh, yes, you, it's it's going to be great. You you inspired millions, Vani. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let's go ahead and uh, get, get going into Willow and start talking about this game. All righty. Are, uh, are we ready then? I think we are. Okay. All right. So time starts once I have control of Willow. And that is going to be right about now. Awesome. Good luck. Oh, thank you very much. So let's explain what's going on here. The first, actually, the very first thing that I'm doing here is something mm -hmm. that is very much for marathon safety. Um, I am going into this hut over here talking to uh, Willow's best friend, Von Carr. He's going to give us the long sword. It's the first weapon that we obtain in the game. Now, if you are uh, running this for, and you're really trying to go for, for a world record or anything like that, mm -hmm. um, you actually don't pick up this sword. You can save maybe about a minute or more by skipping it, um, which is going to make the later but the later part of this beginning of, oh good the later part of the beginning of this run um definitely more dangerous and very easy to rip and i'll explain where those parts are but for now right. um, what we're doing is we're killing a couple of enemies here because we want to get ourselves to a very specific experience level um so that we can level up uh at a very specific time which is essentially uh, as soon as it, as soon as we can get it. So let me kill one more skull here without getting hit, without getting hit. Oh, thank you. Okay. Alrighty. <clears throat> so we got one more screen here before we get to the next town. I'm going to go ahead and just kill this guy. And now, oh, perfect. Okay, good. So I got to exactly 130 experience, which is just where I want to be. Um, I'm going to kill one more enemy coming up here, uh, which is going to grant me 20 experience, which is what I need to get to level two, uh, which is another thing that we're doing for marathon safety. So um, the fact that I haven't taken any, okay, that two damage actually is fine. I want to have at, I want to have more than 20 HP for this next section that we're doing here. Mm -hmm. So this confrontation right here with this giant snake creature. Come on down. Come on down. Thank you. So uh, I need to hit it 17 times to kill it. Every time I hit it, it shoots out these fireballs. So I can hit it twice. Then I got to come down here and dodge. And then I can come on back. Now, um, in the world record run or in the you know if you're trying to do this as fast as possible um there's a way that you can actually so every time you come in contact with the snake or one of its fireballs it deals 10 damage um there's a way that you can boost through that one and then this one that we're about to get through here and only get hit once what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna give myself the safety to boost through it twice glad i did it because it hit me twice the frame where you um, where you touch it, where it will only hit you once, is not entirely reliable. So the reason why we did this is we need to get the golden statue, uh, but now we're done with this area. Um, so right now I'm going to do a death warp. I will warn you, the screen is going to flash black and white very intensely. If you have any photosensitivity issues, now would be the time to look away. We did get the snake dance, though. That is very important. Uh, Bonnie? Uh, yes. And I'm saying this as well for our wonderful Reach and Brazil. I believe there is actually a delay between your, like, commentary and what we're seeing oh. on stream. Am I ahead? Is my commentary ahead you, or behind? You are ahead. 
Oh. Okay. So, well, I guess I guess that's good when it comes to giving the photosensitivity warnings. I'd rather be ahead than behind. Yeah, but it's it. What it means is is that we are that there's like a pretty big um, delay between us and and where you are. Oh wow. Okay. Commentary's nearly a minute ahead. Yeah. Okay. It's I I I can kind of tell what's going on. It's a combination of. Like, probably, like, the connection issues kind of, like, catching up with us. Yeah. So, we have to figure out what we want to do. Okay. Um, because there are, like, two ways to handle this. Live text support on stream. <laughs> well, I'm just going to keep going with the run. All right. Um, that's... I guess explain stuff after you do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so um, I'm actually I'm actually watching the stream myself. It's about 45 seconds behind where I am right now. Oh God! Don't touch me, please. I'm just gonna go ahead and despawn, just to be sure. Okay. So um, you might notice that when I um, when I talked to that skeleton, gave him the golden statue that we were going to retrieve. When I came out of the cutscene, I walked backwards into the cave. Uh, that is the moonwalk. If you do not do the moonwalk, your run is invalid. <laughs> All right, but coming up is my first boss fight. And uh, well, I mean, it will be. Uh, so I'm gonna go quiet because this is very particular. Did you just get the experience and are now talking to the fellow who's like talking about flowing fire? Yes. Okay, good. Sync is fixed. Okay, let me refresh the stream on my end once I have a chance and I can actually do it right now. And let's see how well we're caught up. Now, now to be fair, it's true. It is sync is fixed when I am like seeing it. Ah, okay. Okay. Well, the that's. Whole I guess that's what really that, that's matters. also what 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 Syl did, and that is why chat. Let us know if Sync seems more in line. Yeah. Okay. So uh, it sh you should see it by now. I have uh, I have fought Bogarda, and um, here's the thing. Even now, even getting to level two, we're still pretty under leveled fighting him. So. Um, the fight that we do there is very particular in order to make sure that we um, do that without dying. The key to it is that um, is that body contact with Bogarda does less damage than that axe that he throws. Okay. So what we do is we intentionally uh, okay. damage boost off of Bogarda himself so that when he throws the axe, it goes through our iframes. Mm -hmm. And it affords us a few more opportunities. Well, I shouldn't say a few. Maybe just like one or two more opportunities to get hit, so that we can, um, so that we can uh, kill him without dying. Another death warp coming up. So the flashing is going to happen right now. So. Um, Okay, the sync now on my end, I, now the stream seems like it's about 12 seconds ahead of me. So hopefully that's a lot better for everyone. Anyway, so we're going to do several death warps in this game, and it accomplishes two things. The first is uh, it usually will bring us back to uh, the next area that we need to go to faster. But more importantly, and a lot of times, uh, when you come back to life, you have, um, you have full MP and HP. So that's uh, that's more what we're looking to do. No spawns there, interesting. So let's talk a little bit about enemy spawns. There are some screens where enemies will always spawn, like those snake men. 
um, that I was fighting earlier. Um, but some, uh, there's only about a 50-50 chance for them to spawn, and it is dependent on the frame where you enter the screen. Now, we don't really have a... We don't really have a reliable way to manipulate when that frame is going to happen for those things. So sometimes we're going to have to do like, you know, just cycle back and forth to force these bonds. So that little thing I'm walking by by there, those are the brownies. Uh, for those of you that are familiar with the movie on which this is based, we're going to be seeing a lot of characters from, from the original movie. And... Um, We'll be encountering them in various positions. Okay, this screen here that I just walked through that has those trees that just woke up, that's a very important screen, and we're going to be uh, doing some cool stuff with it uh, in just a few minutes. Oh, and also more flashing. Also, there are people here who don't know that this was a movie? Go. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. So so there was, yeah. a, um, there was a movie released, I want to say 1988, uh, called Willow, which was, uh, it starred like, uh, like War oh, whoops, no, I go east here. Uh, it goes. It's had like Warwick Davis, Val Kilmer, um, uh, Joanne Wally, um, a few others, and it was about a. Uh, it was about a gentleman named Willow Upgood, who is our uh, protagonist here, and uh, he is part of a tribe of people called the Nelwins, which are uh, what we would, you know, in our world would equate to essentially little people and um willow upgood is an aspiring sorcerer and he wants to become the high aldwin's apprentice um, but fails to do so and feels like he needs to prove himself well one day um floating along in the river near their village comes what is called uh, a, a race of uh humanoids called daikinis which are what we would understand to be essentially normal human beings. Um, Daikinis are considered kind of like uh, a curse for the um, for the Nelwins. So they avoid contact with them as much as possible. But this particular Daikini that came to their village was a little baby girl named Elora Dannon. And as luck would have it, Elora Dannon was the child of prophecy that would <clears throat> bring down the fall, uh, that would bring the downfall, excuse me, of the evil Queen Bath Morda, who is trying to uh, conquer the world. Ooh, okay. And so Willow sets out on an adventure to return this Daikini baby <laughs> to the Daikinis so that. Um, they don't have to deal with it anymore, essentially. Well, along the way, he comes to learn that there is a prophecy where he will be the one to bring about the downfall of Bath Morda. Ooh, okay. And so this game very loosely follows that plot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but here's the thing. Why did this game not have, like, screaming baby mechanics like Yoshi's Island? I don't know. This is a very important part of the run that's actually coming up here. Okay, okay, go This ahead. is part of the run we call the Hellway. You'll notice that, unfortunately, I've had the bad luck of getting an enemy spawn who where I'm trapped in by two skeletons with shields that can block my swords. This second screen didn't have it. This third one did not have it. This is Woo. very good. I'm going to have Yay. to go right back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in this cave. I'm going to talk to Matanda, the dragon. He's going to give me the thieves bracelet, which I will need to get to the next part of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm about to walk right back through that hellway. So we are going to pray for no skeletons, because especially on this first screen here, there can be red skeletons that spawn, and they do a truckload of damage. We're not seeing them. That's good. No blue skeletons here. Come on, baby. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Beautiful. All right. One out, of, one out of six is above average luck, so... Happy to see that in a marathon for sure. All right. And uh, let me know when you you have a good moment for me to read some donation. Oh, um, give me just a second sure. here. We're going to we're going to do a very particular enemy kill, um, and then we have a fairly important cutscene. And okay. then once I'm done with that, that'll be a good time. Okay, okay so no problem. Right, just right. No, I didn't. Dang it. Oh no. What you want to do is you want to pin that snake into the corner with the flowing fire. 
uh, and you will kill it a lot faster. Okay, that's... All right, whatever. That just took a few extra seconds. Uh, the fact that I took damage there is not good, but we're going to roll with it. All right. So this is Poe. I, I went into a hut before I came into the Matanda Cave, and I talked to an old lady who gave me medicinal herbs for her pet, whatever this thing is, um, in case he needed it, which he does because his wings are damaged. So he's very thankful that we have healed him. He's going to give me an ocarina, which is a magical spell that essentially will teleport me to select sections of the game. I'm going to use this uh, several times throughout the run. Okay, at this point, we're basically just walking back the way that we came in, so now is a great time for donations. All right. Um, so we have $30 from our wonderful Licky Starscream. Yes. Uh, he says, I am no task spot, but hopefully we can see, still see Warmech in the marathon. Actually, no, we can definitely see our robot overlord here. Uh, that money went to the Warmech incentive for Final Fantasy 1 randomizer. And then uh, we also had the lovely Zoe Vermillion also donated, saying, uh, matching Licky's donation due to how many times she messed up the completely free double frame perfect trick. We didn't get Warmech in the PSP run, so let's make sure we get it in the rando. And also, shoutouts to Sea Scorpions. <laughs> I mean, we're gonna see we're gonna see Warmech hopefully in the randomizer. We need another thirty-one dollars to make that a reality, chat. That's up to you. And then um, we also will be seeing Warmech uh, during the Final Fantasy Legend Two race. Very nice. Thank you very much for those donations. Um, so you might have noticed that, oh crap, never mind, we're gonna despawn here. You might have noticed that there was a screen where I walked into it, it was kind of a, a, a crooked hallway. I saw a ghoul looking enemy and I immediately noped out of it. So those ghouls um, are very problematic for a couple of reasons. First of all, I currently have no reliable way to damage them enough where I can kill them. Uh, the other thing is that what those ghouls do is uh, they will they will turn you into a pig, which is bad because while you're a pig, you cannot leave the screen that you are on, but they will also shoot bubbles at you and do damage, um, which is bad. That, so. that, that sounds good. Yeah, you're, you're totally correct in all of that. I'd know better that too. There's only one time in video games where you want to be a pig, and that's for Piggy Pally Strats in FF4. Correct. All right, so what we're doing here is we are encountering the fairy Shalindria, who is informing us that, yes, Willow, you are indeed the man of prophecy who will bring down the fall of Vavmorda. Take this magic cane, as you will need it to fulfill your destiny. And so now we're off. Now, this cane is of no use to us yet. It will be soon. Well, in, in a little bit. Uh, but we certainly have to get it now. Ah, shoot. I'm just going to go ahead and kill this guy. I'm going to get an, a life refill soon, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. Um, you know, I I keep seeing this, this question in chat. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and just nip this right in the bud. If you're asking if anything and everything in here is inspired by Newtopia, the answer, of course, is yes. Yeah, we have been over this. We know that Newtopia is the single most important and influential and above all inspirational piece of media in all of human history. Like, whatever, Homer, we don't care about, like, the Odyssey. Who read that? Odyssey, one hundred percent inspired by Utopia. Like all those like bosses that like Ulysses had to fight, inspired by Utopia. Please. So, <laughs> no. um, what I, so couple couple things there. Um, I picked up a sword called the Devil Eye. I'll explain its importance in a minute. But uh, that that gray person that we walked by that was just sitting there, that was Mad Mardigan. He's actually locked up. You can um, find a key to free him. Uh, doing so does us zero good for the speedrun, so we just go ahead and uh, and just let him rot. But we will see him later, don't worry. For those of you wanting to get your Mad Mardigan fix, um, it's coming. Just stick around. All right. You definitely want to 
keep your eyes peeled right now because it's about to get funky. All right? <laughs> so we've flown back to Poe's house using the ocarina. So we've got this screen here with the trance. We're not going to wake them up. Instead, we're going to walk through that little seam in the grass right there, which is definitely not intended. But it's going to allow us to go to Glitchy Town. <gasps> Glitchy Town. This is where things get really, really fun. All right? So what we've done oh. is we have... <laughs> is we have entered we have entered this tower okay. uh oh shoot i need to quit my double eye please don't split thank you okay uh we have uh entered this tower essentially from the side and are now ascending it um okay yes sure that 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 sounds fake but okay oh. <laughs> dang it I did not want to take that hit. Not a big deal. Just going to be a slight little, uh, little waste of time there. All right. So these little bubble ghosts here, um, there's going to be a classification of enemies, which I just, for lack of a better term, I refer to as magic enemies. Magic enemies will only take damage from the Devil Eye Sword and no other swords, whereas non-magic enemies take no damage from the Devil Eye. So I'm going to be switching to this sword, no matter all the other stronger swords that I'm going to be getting throughout this run, I'm still going to be switching back to the Devil Eye, because there's going to be a few instances where I will need it in order to get through what I need to do. Now these little bubble ghosts are part of that group. They look more like snakes to me. Like Ouroboruses? I call them bubble ghosts. Fine. I don't know. Whatever. Bodies are here like whatever skull with your fancy words. <laughs> <laughs> whatever your mythical allusions to the snake eating its own tail. <laughs> oh, goodness. Alrighty. So, uh, we've collected the red crystal, mm -hmm. uh, which you also... You're supposed to collect the blue and the red crystal. Um, however, the blue crystal... You can't get the red crystal until you get the blue crystal. Okay. But since we've broken into the red crystal tower, uh -huh. the game just ignores that we don't have the blue crystal and essentially gives us credit for both. Yeah, perfect. So that glitch was Makes a lot sense. of fun. Yeah. So I tell you what, let's do it again. Okay. That's Only this good. time, okay. we're going to go a different direction. Oh, okay. Okay. Now we're going to go down this tower. Okay. Because we want to get to the floor level, um, get outside, and then there's some, then there's some really interesting stuff that we're gonna do. But for now, uh, we have to we have to climb through just a couple more floors. Um, do I have a minute to read a donation? Uh, not quite, okay. because after we get out of this tower, um, is essentially like the foundation for. Okay. Uh, with this glitch is... Oh, I didn't equip fire. I'm really glad I didn't get hit there. Um, cool. In fact, you know what? While I'm talking about it, let's go ahead and equip the things that I need here. Equipping things in RPGs, who does that? Yeah. So that's one thing... Oh, that's... Uh, speaking of equipping things, one important note is that uh, when you death warp and you continue... Uh, everything that you had equipped becomes unequipped. So after every death, it is necessary to re-equip. All right. So now we're at the now we're at the ground floor of um, of these towers. We're going up the down staircase here, and that's going to become very that's going to become very relevant he uh, relevant bleh, here um, in just a minute. Um, what we're about to do is we're going to kick this whole glitch thing into high, high gear. So we've got this cave here. We're gonna go in it, and there's the boss at the end of it. That's scary, we're gonna go away. No, you know what, let's be brave. Oh my God, an even scarier boss. This is General Kale, get used to this guy. We're gonna be seeing him quite a bit. Okay. So he's gonna come on over here, mm -hmm. and we're just gonna wail on him. He cannot do any damage to me. <laughs> Oh, yeah, There's an you're... invisible wall there that is preventing him from getting to me. Hold, hold up. I can see the wall. It's right there. It's called yeah, the it's UI. Invisible. No, it's on the UI. That, that's okay. fun. That's, that's more entertaining, buddy. You have to go whatever's entertaining. We've been over this. 
So, um, <laughs> you see we wailed on this very sc this scary skeleton boss, but then we showed Mercy. Now, what you might notice is that over here on the left side of the screen are these, um, these player and enemy HP bars. And these only are reserved for when you're fighting bosses. Normally you have just that, you have that box up in the upper left-hand corner. The fact that we're carrying this flag out is going to be extremely important. So this, so this lady is holding Elora Dannon. Unfortunately, the portrait in the left is a picture of a very cute baby girl, but this bar um, kind of covers it up, which is a shame. But uh, trust me, there's cute baby there. Okay. We will all so imagine now, a cute baby. So that boss that we encountered, that's the second to last boss in the game. As such, defeating it is going to give you a lot of experience. It's over 7,000 to be exact. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grind from 1,300 experience to about 39,000 experience in about one minute. And I'm actually going to kind of need serious time to do this. You um, got hello. It. Um, hello. Okay, you know what? Never mind. Okay, there they are. You know what? Now we're gonna we're gonna do this the slower but safer way. They are not cooperating there. So here we go. Oh yes, this this grind is going to be insane. So now now we're going to root for enemy spawns, and we got them. Okay, come here. I want that I want that lower one, and now it's the higher one. Come on. Uh, I, I have to be... Oh, Jesus. I have to be really careful about taking damage here, so I'm doing this very gingerly. Oh, my God. I've been hit three times already. Oh, and four. Oh. Okay. Um, this is really scary, because if I take one more hit, I die. Beep. But you see my experience bar, or my experience uh, total is rolling up very high. That was... I shouldn't... I should have just respawned that room. But um, hopefully now... Come here. Okay. Go away. You're not going to get me. So here's what's happening. Because the boss flag for General Kale is still active, mm -hmm. I'm essentially getting the victory conditions for killing General Kale when I'm killing these enemies. And that condition is... Uh, I think it's about 7,200 experience. It's something along those lines. Oh, dang it! Oh, no! Ah, oh, that's what I was afraid of. Okay. So now I need to go set up this whole thing all over again. Um, okay. Ah, that stinks. Oh, well. It's okay. This is why we added to the... Um, now, what I normally do is that room before I got to those hornets that has those blue flies, I normally do the grind there for two reasons. A... Um, the flies in that room spawn 100% of the time. B, um, I don't have to walk as far to get to them. Mm -hmm. But um, the likelihood that you're going to get hit in that room is much higher. So I think, I don't think I'm even going to try it again, even on this second time around. I'm going to go up to the room with the hornets and kind of be at the mercy of whenever they spawn. Okay. And we'll do it that way. Um, so, um, yeah. Well, while you're walking back, can, can I do the donation thing? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, because someone named Von Ivan, uh donated $50 and wrote out a very nice message for me to read, which is, I am s I am happy to donate to the great cause that is getting to see so many friendos. The value of this money to me pales in comparison to the value I get from spending time with those I care about so much. Put this money towards Ring Fit Adventure, because as much as I love all of the Valkyries, I am powerless to the siren song that is trolling Natara. And uh, if all of you would also like to troll Natara, <laughs> we I mean, are. Let's be real. Yeah, I mean that 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 let's let's be real. Uh, we we know our demographics. That's about ninety percent of chat. <laughs> uh, 
Um, it's going to be another $35 to unlock Ring Fit Adventure. Yeah. And, I... oh, I was just going to say, and if we unlock that, we get a bonus, in we get a bonus incentive that you all don't know about, but it's super cool, I promise. I noticed that when I made that donation, I got that to pretty close to done. So, um, I am, I'm calling on you, chat. Um, I, as much as I love trolling Natara, I'd love it even more if y'all could join in. So <laughs> let's get that donation met. Why are you being, there we go. Okay, good. I'm get, yeah, get them separated. I don't want to have anything to do with your friend. All right, so here's the thing. Um, normally, in order to get to the levels that I need, uh, I would need to kill five of them. Yes. Um, however, when you die, any experience that you have in excess of whatever it took to gain your current level is gone. So I'm actually going to need to kill six. So um, that's not that big a deal, though. So there's three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so each of these is giving me over 7,000 experience a pop. What this is going to do is it's going to get me to level 13. Level 13 specifically is very important for two reasons. Um, first of all, the cane that I received from Sherlindria, I'm going to use it to to transform um, Bavmorda's good counterpart, a lady named Finn Raziel, um, from her opossum form back into her human form. When she does so, when, when I do so, excuse me, she is going to thank me by blessing my cane with her power, which is going to allow me to actually use it against Bavmorda to kill her. God, get out of my way. I'm just gonna go ahead and kill you. Killing the second one doesn't give you the experience. It gives you normal experience. It's just the first one that spawns on screen that gives you what you need. Oh, oh okay. So I'm just killing the second one just to get it out of the way. But that's it. That's that's all I need to do. Hold up. Hold for up. For like two seconds. Please go, like, like, we need to go, like, rewind this conversation back a few minutes. Can you explain the woman who got turned into a possum? Yes. Because <laughs> that so... was not a sentence I was expecting to hear on stream tonight. <laughs> okay. So, um, Bavmorda, Spirit of the Sky, Finn Raziel, Spirit of the Earth. They were supposed to, the two of them were supposed to kind of give the world balance. However, uh, Bavmorda became greedy for power and decided she wanted to rule the world by herself. Okay. She knew she was not going to be able to do this if Finn Raziel was in her way. Uh -huh. So what she did was she used her magic to turn Finn Raziel into a possum, thus rendering her incapable of stopping Bavmorda from her evil plan. Oh, okay, okay. You'll see. I mean... Now, uh -oh. now that that actually <laughs> is in the movie. Okay, uh, got a death. Okay, so I should probably explain what I just did there. I walked outside, yeah. walked right back in. Yes. I'm gonna death warp here, so there's flashing. So um, the reason why I have walked outside really quick and then walked back in to die is that when it comes to anything that you do in a cave, a castle, or anything like that, such as levels you gain, experience. Um, uh, uh, items that you get, anything like that. If you die while you're in the castle, you don't get credit for that. Now, if you oh, essentially no. just tag being outside, then it does give you credit for it after the death war. Okay. So we're going to come back in here, and we're going to do just what we were doing before. Okay. Which is bringing this boss up. I should probably equip the things that I need in order to uh, kill him. So this time, we're actually going to finish the deal. We are going to kill General Kale, and we're only doing this because we need to um, we need to remove this invisible wall that's in front of me so that I can essentially go up the down staircase here. Now, in case you haven't figured it out, I'm entering this cave from the back end. The boss is at the very end of it, and then you're supposed to come up and do those towers. Um, I'm actually going to go quiet here for just a minute because um, the music in this cutscene is beautiful, and I want you all to enjoy it. I will also enjoy the music. There we go. 
Okay, okay. So, 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 so possibly just got like, uh, like got <laughs> swiped right on Tinder. Is that what just happened there? <laughs> I'm sorry. What? <laughs> did she like, did possibly just get a hot date? Okay. So yeah, let me explain what happened there. <laughs> All right, so the so the boss that's supposed to be there was that kind of spiky thing that you that you saw when I first um, entered that room. Uh, yeah. Boss is called Moose, okay. and uh, Moose was turned into that monster by Bav Morda. Okay. Um. Ah, oh, shoot. Oh, good. Okay. So, uh, so Moose was a young man, as you saw there. I, I released him from that shell um, by by killing General Kale, but the game instead gives me the cutscene as if I'm as if I'm killing Moose. Okay. Um, now, normally you're not able to get into that room at all and make the boss appear unless you have an item called the Cross Flute, which is from Moose's love, Zena. Um, okay. And the melody is supposed to remind him of um, of his oh, love. Okay. So in, okay. in defeating him, um, we play the flute only to discuss. I'm sorry, I'm going to interrupt the story real quick because what I'm picking up here is the magic of fleet. This is essentially my exit spell. We're going to use this quite a bit to save a lot of time throughout <laughs> the second half of this run. Anyway, so um, the cross flute plays okay. once we get there. Um, and in so doing, oh, I should have killed him. That was dumb. Okay. Why are you. Wait, do I have the devil eye on? I do. Why did that go right there? I'm interesting. All right, this damage was not cool, but whatever. All right. Um, okay. So in so playing, it has um, it has summoned Zena. Unfortunately, uh -huh. um, Zena's already dead, so it summons her spirit. Okay. Um, yeah. So Moose is super depressed. Um, I don't know why I despawned those. I could just kill them. Um, and he says, "Look, you freed me. Thanks a lot. Um, here's the spell of Bombard. Bombard is an AOE spell that." I mean, if you thought the the flashing from the death warp was bad, the screen shake that that spell does would downright just make you wretch. It's awful. So we're never going to use it. It's Wait. not that useful anyway. So that's kind of nice. My point is, so are there multiple pots of people? Well, I'm really glad you mentioned that because pay attention to what's going on here. Because here's Possum Lady. Willow. I am the reserved messenger of the earth. Use your magic to change me into human form. <laughs> and we do. Now, here's the thing. I cannot do this unless I'm level 13, which is why that grind is so necessary. Okay. All right. So Finn Rizal's a human, and we're all happy now. Um, now, the other reason why level 13 is so important is because um, I'm going to need to use... I'm going to need to use the cane. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and equip it right now because it actually is useful. Now, what the cane does is it shoots out these little bubbles that actually do a decent amount of damage. When we fight Bath Morta, the final boss of this game, in her first phase, she will only take damage from the cane. However, every use of cane costs magic points. In order to do enough damage to Bath Morta, in order to kill her with the cane, it will take every single shot connecting from the cane um, but I will only have enough MP to do that much damage once I am at level 13. Okay. You need I think 200 and oh shoot I think you need 216 MP in total and um, uh, uh, at level 13 your maximum is 221. Also, so. also uh, chat thought that she was cuter as a possum. <laughs> I yeah, she doesn't look like she a is an old woman, and yes, the possum is very cute. However, the possum cannot help me beat the game, so okay. forget. Do you look? She looks more like 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 a marmoset. I think. I think that's the animal I'm thinking of. You know what? If you really want to get into semantics, I'm not going to get in your way. You can call it a marmoset. You can call it the bubble ghosts or a <laughs> or whatever you want to no, do. I'm just. Wait, wait, I'm just gonna. <laughs> I'm just gonna let you do your thing. Bella, like. Chad had such a good name to call to call the to call them Oro Bubble Bubbleoses. <laughs> to to name not. smush it all together. Nice. All right. So what I'm picking up here is the monster's bone. What it what this essentially is mm -hmm. is a magic spell um, called uh, Spectre, and we're actually gonna use this pretty soon. Now. I know Dragon Quest XI is coming up, and as we know, in Dragon Quest games, there are slimes. Well, oh, yeah. we're going to go ahead and have an homage to that right here. 
What the monster's bone does is, once I get through these rocks, it will turn me into this little slime guy here. Now, this is important because when you are a slime, you generate no threat, and all these screens that I'm going onto, I am never going to encounter enemies, even if there would normally be a 100% chance of them appearing. This is actually going to be fully necessary to progress coming up pretty soon. But right now, what we're doing it here is just for safety and to save time. Okay. Um, but there's going to be um, there's going to be a part where having this and using this bone will be required. I just love how we're such a cute little slime. You are a cute little slime. You're, you're so cute. You're so cute and so gooey. Okay, so this is Dirt Mountain. We're gonna encounter Dirt Mountain uh, in several places, and we will always ca uh, call it out when we do. Excuse me. All right, so we're coming in here. We're getting the thunder magic. This will be useful um, a little later on. But more, more importantly, she gives us a refill of everything. I'm going to pop up here real quick, do a little bit of marathon safety, and pick up the heal ball. This is essentially like cure two. I skipped the cure one spell because it's too tedious to get. Um, so this is just strictly for safety. It only takes about 15 seconds, so I'm good with it. Um, I'm actually going to do a decent amount of walking here, so if you have any donations and or blurbs, this would be a decent time for it. Oh, actually, no, I'm sorry. Oh, um, no. I just wanted to. Ex I want to explain the okay. necessary use of um, of the scepter spell. No, I'm sorry, the specter spell. Excuse me. Um, when it's coming, it's actually coming up pretty soon. All right, let's get these skeletons out of my way. Okay. Oh, there's Dirt Mountain. No, Dirt Mountain. Don't breathe fire at me. Oh God, Dirt Mountain. No. 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 Oh no. All right. So hold on. Okay, I'm holding. So, these little holes in the ground um, after this screen uh -huh. will produce enemies that will literally block your path and they are indestructible. Okay. So we have to use we have to use a specter spell to um, to get past them so that they will not spawn. Okay. Um, so we're just gonna slither on through here and we're good. Now's a good time for donations. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> we'll we'll get we'll get to the yeah we will definitely get to the to the donations. Uh, sure. Um, uh, so we, uh, got in, uh, $35 from the wonderful Leggy Starscream. Oh my goodness. Who simply, uh, put in a bunch of, uh, Valks, evil, Valks, evil, Valks, evil. Good luck, <laughs> Hex and Natar. <laughs> she didn't actually, like, write all that out, but knowing Leggy, I know that, uh, she would appreciate that I threw in a good, like, villain laugh there for her. <laughs> And uh, with that, um, we have uh, met that wonderful um, Ring Fit Adventure uh, incentive. Yes! Thank you all. And that means that we now get to unlock the uh, bonus incentive. So I am going to go right ahead and do that, uh, which is to do it as uh, what we're calling shenanigans percent. Oh. What does that mean? None of that. Uh, I don't know. You're going to have to find out, and the only way to find out is to donate. But you have, you have, you have the whole rest of the marathon to get there. You know, I was sincerely hoping that 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 um, incentive was going to get during my run, and I know I contributed fifty of my own dollars to do it. But so be it. If that's what it needed, then then that's what it needed. So I am a happy boy right now. So here is kind of a little bit of a hellway here where you see these skeletons um, doing a decent amount of damage to me. Fortunately, um, it's not so bad because A, we've got a lot more HP, and now I actually have a way to heal myself. I don't want to have to heal myself because the way that I'm routing my MP for the next section here is pretty tight. And in fact, the fact that I got that um, enemy right there, which when you kill it, at least behind that little... Um, that little dot that when you stab it, it gives you 10 MP back, which is nice because I'm going to be using a whole lot of it um, 
over the next few minutes. So these hornets are awful. They do a ton of damage. All right. So we're going to talk to this eagle man here. Mm -hmm. And uh, he is going to give us the wing sword. Now, currently, the wing sword is extremely weak. However, um, it will eventually become the most powerful sword in the game. Okay. Uh, but not yet. So uh, we will continue. Oh, come on. I, my HP is actually fairly low, so I don't want to mess. Okay, good. I don't want to mess with those guys if I don't have to. I like how there's like possum ladies and bird guys. And... Oh, yes. Just, just a very oh, colorful yeah. cast. We also, uh, we also passed by a, um, uh, a creature early on. It's kind of like it's kind of like a mix between like a, a rabbit and a like turtle. Like it's this weird little thing. I don't know. Uh, we don't need to talk to it, so we don't. Um, you know what? Sure. Why not? I mean, I think I've got enough. Uh, yeah, I have enough MP. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. I was just doing that for fun. And we're going to use a little slime guy again. Now, this little hellway here where these skeletons were trapping us in, um, a couple of screens from now, we've got all those rocks falling down. Um, we are not going to see any of that. Oh, one thing I do want to I want to point out. So, we are a cute little slime. We are just slithering along. Whatever noise a slime makes when it slithers along oh, is what I it know. does. But I we're going to walk in the door... And we're going to hear the clip-clop of footsteps. Okay. Even as a slime. <laughs> no! Okay, well, wait, wait, hold up, hold up. Body, what, what, si what sound do you think that uh, slimes make? Okay, chat, chat, chat says skloop. Is, 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 is Sploot? The... Sploot? Ooh. Uh, I like burp. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm really glad that thing didn't hit me. Whoop! Oh, I... I like literally just just put like silly slime on a on a monopia in in chat and I will read it. I like sk squelch, sploosh. <laughs> Penguinator, okay. Wiggle, wiggle, tim tim. <laughs> swish, swish. Alrighty, so I have now obtained the Witch's Shoes, which is going to allow me to um, get across that cursed bridge. Um, uh, but first we have to walk back through this way. Oh, God. So, is, like, the Witch's Bridge, is, is that, like, like a catwalk? Are we going to uh, turn on the catwalk? You could say so. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, I mean, <laughs> and th this catwalk is extensive. And you'll know it when we get to it. We're going to get to it pretty soon, actually. So, um, yeah. Oh. Uh, I miss seeing the shoes in, in the inventory. What did the shoes look like? Uh, they look like wooden clogs. What? Okay. Yeah. I never what? actually go to my items, like my key <laughs> items in my inventory, because you never, like, like they're all just... Um, they all just give you their, you know, their latent effect. You never, like, actively use Wait, one of the items. I, so are these actually the witch's claw? Like, the witch's crocs? <laughs> um, likely. <laughs> Do they have the I'm... cute little, like, 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 croc, like, um, what are they called? The little, like, croc accessories you can get to yeah. put, like, little, like, like, doodads on them? Yes. <laughs> yes. They have little, uh... I Little, want uh, bra they they look like uh they look like the brownies, Frenjin and Rule. <laughs> Alright, so that was the catwalk. I'm really glad I got the extra MP because it allowed me to use that thunder spell. Um otherwise I would have been pinned in by those skeletons and I would have taken a lot more damage than I felt like, especially at only 116 HP. Because I still need to get through this next section here, which is not entirely safe. Um I mean, dying would only set me back to this village that I'm walking through right now, so it wouldn't be... It wouldn't be, like, crushing, but I'd rather avoid it if I can. Alright, so this is spooky Tirasleen Castle. We'll go in there in a minute. But first we need to, uh, we need to talk to someone to do a little, like, plot trigger. 
Um, mm -hmm. So, we're going to do that real quick. There we go. Alright, so we're going to slosh or sploot or slither or do whatever it is that we're doing through this next section. And um, hopefully it will stay on long enough that I avoid uh, a rather nasty enemy coming up here at the very end of this long ascending bridge. I, I, I like how many people are just like all in on witches' crocs. On the witches' crocs. <laughs> you know, hold on, hold on. What? 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 Let me let me hold it. Let me get up to the top of this bridge. Okay, cool. Okay. There they are. Those are the witch's shoes. Oh, oh wait, I had, I had to wait for the stream to catch up so I can see them. I want to see them. I want to react in real time before I unpause. Okay, good. I like that we are, we are currently like totally spending time. Oh yeah, oh no, that's cool. I'm waiting to see these shoes. Well, it's good. I know that you'll have a little bit of time like when you get up here that I can like describe them in, in, in great detail. Okay. Yes. Now, see, now, now, those definitely are not, like, Crocs or Clogs. I'd say those are more, like, those sort of, like, slouchy boots. And then, like, slouchy you... boots? Yeah! The, the, the ones that, uh, that kind of, like, you know, like, are, like, baggy around, like, the ankle and everything. They're, like, they're, like, like the slouchy socks that used to be, like, super popular in Japan, like, the super long ones. Okay, Death Warp coming up here, so. Okay. There will be the flashy flashy. See, to me, they look like the old, like, like the, uh, I forget if they're Danish or Dutch, like their traditional, like, wooden, kind yeah, of, the wooden of shoes that they wear. That's what they, that's what they remind me of. I don't know, they don't have that, that, that classic clog shape. Dutch, okay, thank you. Oh my god, please don't transform me. These purple ghouls are absolutely awful. Their transformations last for like 45 seconds. So if you get off the screen with them fast enough, then you're good. Get out of my way. They don't do that much damage, but I'd rather just go in with full HP in case this goes sideways. Which it shouldn't, but whatever. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and talk to Eric. This makes it a little slower, but whatever. Uh, Eric is the legendary warrior of Tiras Lean. He's going to give us the Kaiser Sword, which is fairly strong. We're only going to use it for one boss, um, which is actually coming up in the next room. Oh, whoops, and I want to have Fleet on as well. Okay, so here is the Ebor Sisk. I'll explain the significance of that name in just a second, but now I've killed it, which is good. So... Uh, the Eborsis was actually a creature which appears in the movie. It is a reference to, uh, it is a, um, what do you call that? A portmanteau of the names of Roger Ebert and Gene Siskel, which were two um, very famous movie critics back in the day. So here we go. We finally encounter, oh no, here we go. Haha, -ha, I am General Kale. He introduces himself despite the fact that we've seen him twice already. I find that amusing. Now we talk to Mad Mardigan. He tells us we're in despair. We're not getting out of here unless we walk down to the right. And now we see the brownies. Cat calling you out in chat. <laughs> yeah, whatever, cat. <laughs> Some people are young and don't know, okay? Bonnie was being nice and helping out our younger viewers. Thank you for having my back, Scala. Heck yes. Unlike somebody else. <laughs> Now we know who's gonna who, who buy, money's gonna buy drinks for it. Limit break. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. 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 <laughs> so 
So, okay. so, so we now have for reals defeated General Kale. No. But, no. No. Okay. He just he just tossed us into a prison cell. Oh, okay. Only to have the brownies bust us out. Okay. <laughs> no. Okay. I'm now. Now I'm buying Canadry because Cat's gonna buy Crocs just for this run. <laughs> <laughs> Cat will uh, will very likely be couching for this run at limit break as well, so she needs to know all of the. Uh... Oh, you flatter me, Shentok. <laughs> oh my god. You can't you can't see that I'm blushing right now. <laughs> I'm sorry. I went to, I, I went to Crocs.com <laughs> to see all the little Croc accessories you can get. Some of these are amazing. I mean, don't. I mean, keep watching the marathon chat. But uh, when you have the chance, uh, just go check out. Oh my God! You can kick gamer once for your cross. Oh, of course. Yes, <laughs> the little gamer. Uh, what are they called? Like grommets or something like no, that? No, they have no. It's a little controller, so you can have little controllers on your cross. <laughs> Because that's that's what a true gamer wears. Yes. Crocs with little generic video game controller grommets on them. <laughs> if you want to call yourself a true gamer? You best be rocking those. I don't care. Otherwise, I'm, I'm... people will call you out. <laughs> I'm gonna use my mod powers and put that like right in the chat for everybody. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Croc trollers. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> yes, absolutely, Mecca. You, your Crocs have to match your kitty ear headphones. Otherwise, you're not doing it right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, I can't say anything. I owe a, a literal Game Boy Advance purse. <laughs> Alrighty. So we're actually not terribly far from the end of the game here. Oh, Dirt Mountain, no! Don't hit me, Dirt Mountain! Damn it! No, Dirt Mountain, stop it! <laughs> its face is so silly. I love it. I know. <laughs> it really is, which is why I have to call it out every time I see it. Oh, Smapey's got a really solid suggestion there in chat. I like it. There's, a, there's an app for your Crocs. There's an app? There's apparently an app to help you, like... There's, there's a designer to help you, like, design your perfect Crocs. Oh. <laughs> it's, like, it's like one of those Facebook quizzes. Which Croc are you? <laughs> They have like all those like cute names and everything though. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright, oh hold on, real quick. So um so you see we are the little slime. Dang. Which is actually really important. Because we get up here, there's this big scary guard, we're gonna go and talk to him as the slime. Oh no, a monster, and he's gone. <laughs> All right, so this is Knockmar Castle. This is essentially the last part of the game. We're, this is our, this is essentially our first, I don't know, dip into here, if you will. Um, we are just going to do this real quick to talk to this pink bird man. Mm -hmm. What will be? Oh no way! You had the wing sword. Let me make it the most destructive weapon in your arsenal. And so he does, which is pretty rad. Oh, sorry, I bumped my mic. <laughs> Apologies, Chad, if you heard that. Alright, so now we're going to get out of here. Now we're going to immediately go to our magic... Hello. Use the ocarina. Take us back to Tiraslin.
and then uh, we now that we have talked to um... oh no I'm sorry um, never mind this this next part is actually kind of funny okay or it can be funny so but we do need to get uh, one more key item here So we come into this little hut. There's this old lady by herself. And she says, What? You've met Eric? If you do, you do not need to talk to Eric. Um, and if you don't, she still says the same thing. Uh, oh, no, I'm on the Ocarina. That's right. Yeah, everyone knows Eric. Come on. Oh, yeah. All right, so now we fly to Nokmar. Mm hmm. All right, I'm going to do one more death warp here, so if the flashy is um, a, an issue for you, you have been warned. I'm actually looking into having um, somebody ROM hack this game to remove the flashing. Oh, that, that, that'd be smart. Yeah, it, it's just there's a lot of it in this game. When you cast, like, the fleet spell, um, mm -hmm. things like that, it's just it's bad. So if we could just get it out... That'd be great. All right. Um, I'm actually going to be quiet because the music here in Nokmar Castle is tremendous. So I'm going to let you enjoy it. Okay. Uh, you can interrupt, though, if you have a donation. I'm cool with that. Uh, I, 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 I don't have a donation right now. Uh, right now, me and half of chat are on the Chrome website. Yeah, I can see that. I want the golden ones, body. I should not want golden crocs, but you can buy them! <laughs> There's official Pac-Man accessories. Pac-Man accessories? Yeah, there, there's a, you can get little Pac-Man ghosts for your crocs. Yo, as, as if the wearing of crocs <laughs> didn't make you appear old enough, <laughs> You could put a reference on there to early 80s video games and just seal the deal. No, you can get a you can get a croc. What? You can get the croc pins. You can have crocs on your croc. Well, a, there's a grommet that's shaped like a croc. Yes. It's like a it's like a like a baby kangaroo in its pouch. Oh my god, the controller one comes in purple. There's also Mario and Luigi ones. I'm sorry. <laughs> We're supposed to be talking about like actual things <gasps> and I'm just like looking at Crocs <laughs> but you're right, right. So there was the a cutscene here good. <laughs> alrighty so here we go now we are face to face with General Kale. This will be our final confrontation with him. Ah, oh, dang it. All right, taking the damage isn't really that big a deal. It only wastes a couple seconds because I have to wait for my my life bar to fill up here. Um, but yeah, basically all you need to do is just kind of get to his, stay in front of him, but get to his right. And he only swings his sword from that one direction, from that one side of his body. And he only swings it straight down. So you can essentially stay out of its path. Guaranteed. Alright, so this is now the final section of the game. We're going to cross over through um, towers back and forth here. And uh, and then we will confront Bavmorda. So uh, if you wanted to get any more donations in here for uh, me during this run, um, you may do so. Although I am... Uh, there was an incentive that was met for for me. Yes, here. so we, so we get, be, get a little uh, extra There will be some post-game content, <gasps> and that's pretty hype. We're always hyped for 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 more time with Vani here. <laughs> of course. Of course, because that leads to to silly things like I'm now looking at Crocs. <laughs> 
Ah, oh, I've loaded like the entire page of every single croc accessory now. <laughs> croc overload. <laughs> All right. Well, the, the the fight with the final boss is literally coming up in like two screens. Okay, so. great. Here we go. All right. So we walk in the store. We get dumped in the middle of the room. There's Bavmorda. Mm -hmm. She laughs wickedly. Now here's where you have to be very careful. Oh, don't. Oh, okay, good. Okay. So if you move down, if you move kind of down to the right and then turn around, um, she'll always come straight at you. However, if she gets too far to the right, then she'll fly away. And uh, it just makes it a big pain in the butt to get her. All right. So here's her second phase. Now I can damage her with my sword. Time will be as soon as she dies. Okay. There we go. There's time. Oh, nice. Sub 105. <laughs> Yay! Yay! <laughs> All right. So here we go. Let's just run just this part of the ending, not, not the actual credits. Okay. So here we go. And so ended Bavmorda, the messenger of the skies. Who cut ties entirely with the spirits of the skies. Only through the powerful magic of Finn Reziel, the birth of Elora Danon, and, and Willow, the man of courage and belief, was Bavmorda's menace thwarted. The spirit of the skies brought Bavmorda back to the sky. The people chose Eloridanon as their queen and lived happily, wishing for her wealth and happiness. And that's Willow, folks. All right, now, so there was a donation incentive that got added in late, because this run kind of got added in um, as it was. Um, big shout outs to Random Hughes for meeting the goal for this in one single donation. Um, big ups to him. Also, thank you everyone for the GGs. Much appreciated. I see plenty of you there in chat. I do appreciate it. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to enter a special password. Okay. And it goes like this. Um, do you have any donations or anything? This would be a good time while I'm just entering this in. Uh, no, no new donations. Uh, I will let people know that after this run, we will be having uh, Dragon Quest XI by the wonderful High Spirits. Oh, yeah. Uh, we do have, uh, we actually have a bid war that has no words, and that is to pick the voice language. So... Do you want this game in English? Would you like this game in Japanese? We can change it partway through the run, but it's up to y'all uh, what language we'll start in, at least. Uh, we also do still have the goal to uh, show Rab's secret item. It might be Crocs. You don't know. You have to donate to find out. <laughs> nice. All right, so hold on. Let me just double check this password here. Sure. Uh, Okay, that looks good. Okay, good. It did work. All right. I'm going to reset my timer. So here we go. So I've entered this password, um, and I'm actually going to walk to... I'm going to go ahead and walk to this screen right here so you all can see. So this is your starting screen. In fact, we're going to go ahead and go in here because this is really cute. Mm -hmm. This is uh, Kaya, Mims, and Rannon. Those are... Okay. Uh, Willow's wife and kids, respectively. Aww. Oh, very adorable. Thank you, family. Um, but we're here, so I enter this password. So I'm here at the starting screen. You see him at level one. I'm going to uh -huh. go into my inventory. I don't have any swords. Mm -hmm. I don't have any shields. I don't have any magic. Okay. And I don't have any crocs either. <laughs> okay. Or any other items for that matter. But here's what I do have. Mm -hmm. I've got those two pink numbers in the middle of the screen. This is our debug mode for Willow. What those Ooh. two numbers or values, I guess, would be the better way of putting it. Uh -huh. These are coordinates. Mm -hmm. These are going to take us to any screen in the game. Overworld, caves, boss rooms, you name it. We can basically Ooh. go anywhere we want with this. Uh-huh. Okay? So, now, real quick rundown. Uh-huh. In order to beat the game... Yes. You need to be... At level 13, 
Right. You need to have the cane. Yeah. You need to have it powered up. And you're going to need some sort of sword in order to damage Baphmorda. That's okay. the checklist, right? Right. Here we go. All right? Okay. So there's there's Willow there. Three, two, one, go. I'm excited. Uh, whoops, I went the wrong way. Oh, well. Okay. So we're going to teleport into here. We're going to pick up the one sword. This is the second strongest sword in the game. Okay. Um, so now we have our sword. I'm going to move over here. And now we're going to go to B and zero. Okay, now this might look familiar. Where we did all the glitchy stuff with the with the boss. Right, with with with, with the the possum man who went and married his his ghost girlfriend. Yes. Yeah. It's close enough. That should be good enough. Okay. So now here we are, we're back in the um, in the starting section of the game. Mm -hmm. We're just going to come down, we're going to kill these little slugs. Or these little slimes. Slime friends, Each no! one is going to give me the 7,000 plus experience like it did before. I need six of them. I've already done three. There's four. There's five. And then there's six. Okay, I'm going to move here. I'm intentionally not killing those slugs for a reason. Or okay. those slimes, excuse me, for a reason. Yeah. We're going to teleport into the middle of the lake. Okay. All we need to do is enter this screen to trigger this cutscene, which, if you uh -huh. recall, is the one with Sherlindria right. uh, where she gives us the magic cane. Right. Okay. So right now, you have to be careful where you teleport because you can teleport into walls or beyond walls and you're essentially stuck. So the, the places that I'm moving are very specific. Oh. Okay, there it is. Okay, it, 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 it took us, oh. Uh, hopefully we can refresh you and get you back to where we need to be. Gotcha. Okay. So we have the cane, but like I said, it's not of any use to us yet. Okay. So here we go. So I'm actually going to take a little bit of damage from these guys, because okay. I'm going to be doing a death warp. Yep. But like I said before, in order to... You're not going to get credit for the levels that you've gained while right. this experience is still rolling. It actually needs ah. to get to the level where it's at in order to actually give us credit. Where I'm standing right now is right outside of the cave that has Finn Raziel in it. R okay. So as soon as I hit a little over 39,000 experience, that's going to get me to level... 13 and it's going to allow me to do the um it's going to allow me to do what i need to do for that cutscene. so it's okay. only going to be just a few more seconds okay just watching numbers watching just numbers. watch that number roll up as soon as you hear the fanfare you can go in okay fanfare. willow Transform me! <laughs> that is not the voice I was expecting! <laughs> you clearly have not seen the movie. Okay, Bonnie, like, like, so for, for real, for real, um, my girlfriend is coming to visit after all this, this marathon madness between this week and next oh, week death is, warp, is death over. Warp, sorry, flashing. Sorry, oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. Should, should we, should we have Willow on our list of movies to watch while she is visiting? Hell yeah. <laughs> All right. So I got everything I need. I just transported right into Bathmorda's chamber. Okay. <laughs> Fight Bathmorda just the way we did before. 
There's the first phase down. Yeah, Neon Gray knows what's up. It's on Disney Plus, so you know. <laughs> you have to do the thing, though, buddy, for, for Neon. Do the thing? Do, do you know what the... <laughs> they want you to say... Say Lost Dagger after you're done with this. Hold on. Hold on. I'm about to beat the game. Okay. <laughs> there we go. GG! Willow in five minutes and eight seconds. <laughs> um, what? Oh, yes. Neon Gray, you wanted some... Lust Dagger. Oh my. <laughs> Alright, so. <laughs> that was pretty fast, right? I beat Willow. Yeah. I mean, I can actually do it like that in actually under five minutes. That was that was very impressive. That was very impressive and very fast, right? Yes. Oh no. But Scholar, we're speedrunners. <laughs> I'm excited. We can do it faster. In okay. fact, we can do it, believe it or not. We can do it in about a third of the time of what I just did. Okay. Let me just enter in my handy dandy password again. And now it's just going to get, it's just going to get stupid silly. Okay. And I have a feeling this is the kind of crowd for, for that level of silliness. I, I mean, we had a whole conversation about Crocs and I now have opinions. Okay, point well taken. <laughs> <laughs> which, 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 which my main opinion currently is that. <laughs> <laughs> there are a bunch of Pac-Man themed croc accessories, but there's oh no Ms. Pac-Man! Oh, what? that is weak. That's whack! That is weak. I want Ms. Pac-Man on my crocs! I understand. Alright, resetting the timer, password is in, here yes. we go. Yes. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Uh, 17 is gonna be this way. All right, so we go in, we get a sword. Yeah, we, we, we did that before, so, so, we, so we have a sword once more. We do have a sword once more. Okay, I'm gonna move down a little bit, like here. And, and for, for the people in chat who, who came in a little later, uh, yes, this was a, uh, a sort of a glitch showcase uh, that Vani offered to us. So here I go, I'm in Bad Mortis Chamber. You're like, wait a minute, yeah. you don't have the cane, you don't have the levels, what are yeah. you doing? Yeah, what you doing, Vani? What I'm doing is I'm carrying the boss flag over to here. Oh, okay. We're gonna go down to this screen like we were before, and instead we're gonna kill these, we're gonna do damage to a bunch of these slimes. I'd like to do okay. two at once. Ah, here okay. we go. Okay, so what I've done there is I've used the boss flag to get through Bath Morta's first phase. Because oh. the slugs take damage from the sword, that's all we need to do. Okay, so so by all right, that's fine, sure. Okay, <laughs> but you're like, okay, but there's still her second phase, right? No yeah. problem. We're just gonna go right back to where we were. Uh, okay. Take the same slimes again. Okay. So so after Dab she you in a corner, and there's time. <laughs> so after she turned all those deposits, we turned her into a slime. And there's the credits. Willow Yay! in one minute and 33 seconds. <laughs> Debug is fun. I killed the boss by proxy. That's an excellent yeah. way to put it. So essentially, so so how that works is uh -huh. essentially the same principle as what I did before with General Kale, where I carried his boss flag out of the room and into the area where there were other enemies, and I got the victory conditions of killing General Kale. Mm -hmm. Which in that case was over 7,000 experience. Well, that uh -huh. doesn't give you experience. Her reward for when you destroy an enemy with that boss flag is you essentially you you advance it to the next stage of the uh -huh. fight. The, the first stage takes you to the second stage. The second stage takes you to GG. That's it. Nice. There Yay. you go. So. That was absolutely fantastic, Bonnie. Thank you so much. Chat also, thank you so much. Uh, for sticking with us, even as we had, like, some issues. But you know what? It doesn't matter, because we had Vani here being absolutely amazing. We made, like, the program by David Bowie? <laughs> yeah, I know, me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is why I always, like, 
push to be to be your host because we always have way too much fun. Anyway, well, uh, oh, oh go know, ahead, real quick. Stella, yes. You know, I I I gotta say that you've done this several times for me. We yes. always oh shout outs to Fishman by the way, <laughs> and, and Tall Knob too. They're part of the monster design. Um, um, you know, uh, we've done this several times together, oh, and yeah. I always have a blast. I always hey. have so much fun. Also, special thanks to Hardy J as well. Um, so I tell you what, we have so much fun. Why don't we do this again? Yeah. You available around maybe like maybe around this time tomorrow night? Uh, I think so. For for a game that was absolutely one hundred percent verifiably inspired by Newtopia. There is no question about it at all whatsoever. Heck yes. Come back everyone tomorrow night for Newtopia 2 run by current world record holder Buddy Vaughn. <laughs> and I'll be back again Already as, looking forward to it. As your host. Well, right now oh, we are... Oh, here we go. Here, we're going to get our payoff. Oh, okay, so our payoff. up to the top of this tower oh. and now it is official once you see it right there. End. End! Yay! Yay! <laughs> Alright. Let us kick it over to High Spirits, who's going to be here for all of you Night Owls, or all of our wonderful friends around the world, who no matter what time it may be, for a nice, super cozy Dragon Quest Eleven run! So, we'll hey, get who, Wait, who's, who's hosting that run? I think there's like a bunch of people hosting that run, because that run is like really long. Uh, okay. I think the first person, though, might be some Bonnie Vaughn person? Hype! I'm looking forward to this. This is going to be great. <laughs> I'm hyped for your hype. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, get it kicked over. Y'all have yourselves a great evening. But you'll Thank have you. Much appreciated. Take care, folks. <laughs>